good morning one and all present today uh, warm welcome to all of you uh, so let's begin the session so i warmly welcome all of you to the second day of the national level seminar on covid 19 crisis and sustainable development goals in india pathways for adaptation and resilience this is organized by government arts college for men nandanam and sponsored by indian council of social research Hello. Southern Regional Center, Hyderabad. So I'm Mahalakshmi, and I'm super excited to be here today and uh, continue with the learnings and insights. So a quick brief about how the day will look like. Uh, so we have two invited talks today, one by Dr. Uh, Shiva Shankar, and the other by uh, Dr. Chinnamai, and followed by a paper presentation. Technical session we'll have. and uh, post lunch we again have a talk by dr kartik and uh, then we continue with the paper presentations and the last uh, will be the validity so, uh, session which with we uh, lend the day today so uh, let's so i think sir is already here so let's begin the morning session with this talk a quick hope i'm audible for everybody my voice is clear Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Yeah. So brief about uh, so 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 Dr. B. Shivashankar is presently working as associate professor in the Department of Economics, uh, School of Management, Pondicherry University. He has fourteen years of excellence in teaching. and research experience prior to uh, starting his career as assistant professor he was awarded his phd in center for economic studies and planning jnu new delhi his areas of research are developmental economics labor economics gender economics environment economics and agrarian studies he has published four books in reputed publications and has published a number of research articles He has completed three major projects sponsored by various funding agencies like UGC and ICSSR, and he is here today to uh, discuss on the topic impact of COVID crisis on Indian labour market. SDG eight, decent work prospect. Over to you, sir. Welcome to you, and over to you, sir. I'll uh, project the presentation, sir. Yes. Please. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Sir, Shivashank, sir, you have to tilt your camera a little bit, sir. Yeah, that will do, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, actually. Okay. Sorry, but. hello yes yes sir it's audible sir okay uh, okay uh, first good morning to all first of all i thank dr arun uh, organizer of the wonderful seminar and uh, uh, hod of the department and my teacher dr sagai raj in the colleges so and the other faculty members in the department of economics in government arts college nandanam so and dear participant uh, dear participant uh, today i am going to deliver lecture on impact of covid crisis on indian labor market 
STG8 and the decent work prospect. Decent work prospect. Okay, this is my topic. So, in theoretical perspective, in theoretical perspective, particularly in the Arthur Levy's concept concept of the economic development, economic development refers to the process of economic development. It involves movement of labor from low productivity employment to higher level of productivity employment. It's a low level of productivity employment to higher level of productivity employment. It means that in the economic transformation, the laborers move, move from traditional agrarian sector to modern or industrial sector or in service sector. This is the uh, theoretical perspective of economic development. And as a result, these changes of economic development involves growing faster output. It means that a faster GDP growth. If this transformation improve, if this transformation improve, or if this transformation is sustained to improve, the economic and social condition of the wider population considered as economic development. Okay. So in simple, so labor or workforce are moving from low productivity to higher productivity. So traditional sector, traditional sector means that agricultural sector to moving modern sector, the modern sector involves industrial sector and the service sector. So this broader transformation of labor from traditional to modern, it involves the <coughs> improvement of the economic and the social condition of the people. But in reality, in, in reality, particularly in the present phase of economic development, particularly in the present phase of economic development, particularly in the last six to seven decades, it means that since in 1960, in all over the globe, the output growth much faster than the employment growth. This is in the entire globe. So this output growth, it means that the increasing GDP growth failed to create employment in, since 1970s, particularly in the last two, four decades, particularly in the last two, four decades, very challenging for the employment. So the output growth failed to create productive and remunerative employment. It means that it failed to product, create both quantitative and qualitative employment. And as a result, the vulnerability of vulnerability or well-being of the labor condition worse, worse than improvement in the global perspective. So this same tendency, the same tendency failed to create employment, the same tendency failed to create employment both in quantitative and qualitative, not only in the globe, in the Indian labor market also. Okay. Come into the pre-chrono pandemic, pre-chrono pre, uh, pandemic periods. So in the pre-corona period or in the pre-pandemic period, the global unemployment, the global unemployment rate was high. It was 5.4%. But during this period, the growth rate in the entire globe is, is a decent growth rate, around 5 to 7 percentage in different parts of the world. But during this period, labor are underutilized. Labor are underutilized. And as a result, this economic crisis, particularly in the employment crisis, <coughs> started in the pre-coronavirus pandemic period also. In addition to this, so labor is underutilized. So the growth rate failed to create employment, both in quantitative and qualitative. And also in all over the globe, the wage inequality increases. Wage inequality has increases. And similarly, the social security also failed for the majority of the labor. In the entire globe, around 53.1% of laborers are, are not covered in the social security benefit. Okay. So in Indian context, in the Indian context, the quality of employment and the quantity of employment, very severe crisis in the structural adjustment program in 1991. So in sectoral adjustment program, this is called neoliberalism period in the uh, nine, after 1991. So 
this growth rate has failed to create employment both in terms of jobless and job loss growth so during this structural adjustment program that is called neoliberal period the entire gdp growth rate in india was around 5% per annum but this growth rate failed to create employment why this failed to create employment because there is employment elasticity of output employment elasticity of output particularly in the manufacturing and the service sector failed to create employment <coughs> but the agricultural sector at least to create decent employment okay in sometimes during this neoliberal period the employment growth rate in india as negative particularly in the year of 2011 and 12 and 2017 and 18 the growth rate was more than 6% but it during that period the employment growth rate in india as negative growth rate okay so in this context and uh, we discuss on the sustainable development perspective of decent work decent work so what is decent work the decent work concept introduced in 1969 by ilo this ilo provide one mm, gold employment program so in the gold employment program they launched the decent work concept the decent work concept in 1969 what are this decent work uh, decent work uh, <coughs> uh, strategies are pillar of the decent work so in the decent work first one is to provide employment both quantitative and qualitative okay provide employment and the second one is the social protection it means that social dialogue social protection it means that social security and the third one is the third one is the social dialogue so this social dialogue involves employer employee and the institutions okay so this is the decent work concept the aim or the goal of the decent work is to apply all worker all worker both formal and informal worker and just wage earners in the formal economy so the decent work is concerned with workers beyond the formal labor market so it means that this decent work concept go to the informal labor market it means that it concern with informal labor market it includes it includes unregulated wage workers unregulated wage workers so unregulated wage workers means that casual workers okay so not in the regular workers unregulated wage workers involves the casual workers and the self employed workers the self self employed workers including the home workers okay so the aim of the ilo decent work is not only creating job the aim of the ilo the decent work concept is not only creating the job but this job is acceptable quality for casual worker and self employed worker and in recent period it also extended to the regular worker also okay so in this background in this background my lectures is going to different purpose perspective so first is the significance of labor in economic perspective second one is global capitalism and the labor in contemporary world and the third one is the labor in contemporary india third one is the labor in contemporary india so in this labor in contemporary india it uh, uh, consists of uh, methodology of data in particularly in the labor market and the structure of the labor market and the covid 19 and its impact of labor market in india and the conclusion this is the my uh, <coughs> structure of my paper okay first significance of labor in economic perspective okay significance of labor in economic perspective <coughs> so in the significance of labor according to adam smith according to adam smith the labor was the first price the original purchase of money that was paid for all things that was not by gold or by silver but the labor that all the wealth of the world was originally purchased originally purchased so next is the karl marx so the karl marx perspective is different from the other mm, uh, traditional or orthodox economic perspective he stated that uh, labor has the sole power which can create an additional value additional value 
or its subsistence establishing its predominant role as a factor input that increase the economic value of the product economic value of the product so so in this context of karl marx so he used the word that is called reserve army and uh, capital accumulation perspective so in this reserve reserve army of labor and in the capital in the capital accumulations now uh, in the in, in the two perspective of karl marx that is uh, reserve army of reserve army and the capital accumulations so we are now moving into the present global capitalism how this global capitalism affect the labor market in the contemporary world not only india how this contemporary uh, uh, globe affected uh, in the global capitalism this global capitalism how affect in the indian labor market okay so <coughs> so in the global in the global capital in the global capital so this global capitalism this global capitalism increased in the uh 1970s 19 uh, 1970s in the pre coronavirus period in the pre coronavirus period the global unemployment rate was around 5.4% during this period the growth rate was more than 6% so among this among these laborers 53.1% were not covered by the any social protections any social productions so in the context in the context so economist in the context economist economist classified the global capitalism into uh, three into three one is the laissez faire capitalism and second one is the regulated capitalism and the third one is the neo liberal capitalism so first one is the laissez faire capitalism so the laissez faire capitalism we are no uh, economic students so what is the laissez faire capitalism so the laissez faire capitalism state cannot enter in the economic activity so state one state can only do in the uh, police state police state so police activity so during this laissez faire capitalism is the period of colonialism and imperialism period imperialism period so this is the laissez faire capitalism okay second one is the regulated cap uh, regulated capitalism so this regulated capitalism arises during the second world war after the during second world war particularly in the uh, decolonized countries decolonized countries particularly decolonized countries so in addition to this the soviet bloc the soviet bloc also uh, uh, come under into the regulated capitalism regulated capital, capitalism so this regulated capital, capitalism started in 1940s up to 1970s the entire uh, globe so now it's a period of neo liberalism so neo liberalism that is uh, uh, this new the period of neo liberalism started in uh, started in uh, 1970s so this neo liberalism change the dogmatic structure dogmatic structure this neo liberalism the neo liberalism concept stated that concept of market efficiency market efficiency that is called market super supposed supremacy so market efficiency market efficiency is the base of the neo liberalism so this neo liberalism is also known as the spontaneous capitalism this spontaneous capitalism is based on the reserve army of the labor and also this spontaneous capitalism is based on the absolute general law of capitalism absolute general law of capitalism okay so we are in the neo liberalism this neo liberalism consists of both economic and political Uh, policies both economic and political uh, philosophy or policies so <coughs> this neo liberalism consists of privatization one is the privatizations and the second one is the deregulation and the third one is the 
liberalization in trade and finance liberalization and trade and finance so the future of uh, new liberalism or new capitalism is the crucial to change the entire economics structure particularly in the employment challenges perspective in the global era so the <coughs> the the new liberal capitalism completely change the employment structure in the entire globe in the entire globe so this new liberalism the new liberalism has consist of both global economic and political power both consist of global economic and political power so it main aim is deregulation of capitals deregulation of capitals the deregulation of capitals consists of reconfiguration of power power this power in favor of capital rather than the labor capital rather than the labor so the second uh, new liberalism of future is the capital in general and more particularly in the finance capital this finance capital not primarily depend upon the production the profit so Uh, the finance capital not depend upon the profit profit it depends upon the more accumulation the accumulation through the circulations and speculation of the entire world that is called at present by casino capitalism casino capitalism so the casino capitalism means the gambling of the capitals gambling of the capitals and uh, gambling of the capitals so this features of capitalism this features of neo capitalism that is the in the neo liberalism period so in entire globe only the 100 mncs multinational companies to determine the economic order economic order it means that this new finance the new finance that is the global finance adversely affect the real economy particularly in the labor uh, labor perspective particularly in the labor perspective okay this new this new liberalism affected both in the argument of flexible labor market flexible labor market perspective uh, flexible labor market perspective so in the flexible labor market perspective in addition to this relocation of production re relocation of productions across the globe particularly this capitals capitals move from not to the south not to the south so this capital move from north to the south in the form of foreign direct investment or in domestic player without uh, foreign direct investment that is called uh, this foreign direct investment also uh, uh, created to the international division of labor in <coughs> this finance so the finance capitals created in international division of labor this international division of labor create to change the entire global order particularly in the indian labor market and in the chinese labor market so this this concept the financial globalization is uh, uh, related to the transnationalization of economic activity transnationalization of economic activity so the transnationalization of economic activity refers to the segmentation of economic activity from north to the south and as a result in india in the last three decades india become the back office of the world back office of the world so that is the software industry back office of the world china as the global manufacturing of the workshop so this back office of the world china has become the manufacturing of the workshop or workshop this con this economy chinese economy and the uh, indian economy emerge as a result of this financial capitalism financial capitalism so this financial capitalism created segmentation of uh, labor segmentation of international labor international labor okay so this this is the neo liberalism this is the feature of the neo liberalism this feature of the neo liberal neo liberalism create some implication create some implications in the labor market so the first one is the uh, the first one uh, mobility of the capital mobility of the capital so 
in north already the capital moved to the south the reason is that uh, the uh, south uh, laborers has received the subsistence wage level subsistence wage level so the north always threat to the south in the mobility of capital if they ask more wages if they uh, ask more wages okay <coughs> so in the south in the south in addition to this entire in the north wages are constant pressure to reduce constant pressure to reduce so this constant uh, reduction of wages has uh, lead to the globalization of labor resources globalization of labor resources so the globalization of labor uh, labor resources <coughs> is uh, one is the technological change and another one is the capital intensive method and versus and the labor intensive method so this capital intensive and labor uh, labor intensive method is the one and another and the labor productivity has increasing one side and the another side the labor productivity has increasing the labor absorb absorbing capacity has declined this is the first implications the globalization of labor resources this is the first implication so second implication is the wage curtailment wage curtailment so in the implication of neo liberalism liberalism the wage curtailment is the second implications so this wage curtail wage curtail lead to reduction in the aggregate demand this uh, reduction in the aggregate demand lead to declining in the consumer goods rather than the capital goods capital goods capital goods so this ultimate the ultimate the consequences is that reduction in the effective demand so the reduction in the effective demand uh, the crisis is going to the wage workers rather than the capitalists rather than the capitalists this is the second implications and the third one is third one is called the information technology so this uh, information technology is also called the third industrial revolution so this third industrial revolution started in 1970s so this industrial revolutions consist of more information technology uh, this information technology consists to improve in the structure of the labor to speed up the information computing and processing lead to major change in the economic and employment structure employment structure so this information technology lead to change in the employment sector more in the service rather than the primary and the manufacturing sectors okay and another one is the fourth one is the artificial intelligence for artificial intelligent period that is called that is called fourth industrial revolution this fourth industrial revolutions have more impact on the global labor at present the world of work has entirely changed the nature of work has changed the job also changed location of work also changed this is witnessed in everywhere in the world particularly in the developed countries particularly in the developed countries so this fourth generation of technology that is called a robotic robotic type of uh, uh, industrial robotic type of uh, revolution industrial revolution that is called artificial intelligence this artificial intelligence that uh, this artificial this artificial intelligent uh, reduced <coughs> reduced the global employment global employment 5% to 11% 5% to 11% uh, in the last uh, seven years last seven years so this uh, uh, fourth generation of fourth generation of industrial revolutions more mostly affected labor market structure in the north rather than the south this uh, slowly moving to the south also south also so this is the present uh, lab labor market this is the present labor market crisis this is the present labor market crisis okay so uh, this labor market crisis particularly in the new liberation new, new liberalism period particularly after in 1970s uh, uh, as uh, the entire workforce structure as vulnerability so this vulnerability as increasing 
among not only in india the entire globe in the last uh, in the last four decades particularly the vulnerable employment so according to this vulnerable employment defined by the ilo the vulnerable employment particularly for family workers and the own account workers that is called the self employed workers as badly affected so the vulnerability the vulnerability affect the entire labor structure so this vulnerability affect the access to decent work and it's failed to create social security in social security in nine, according to ilo in 2019 in 2019 43.6% of total employed total employed in the entire globe as vulnerable employment condition vulnerable employment conditions employment conditions this vulnerable employment conditions less in north america it's around 4.6% europe and central asia it's 13.8% but in south asia and the sub saharan america it's more than this 70% so this <coughs> our conclusion is that the new liberal economic policy so affect the entire global labor market structure so this global labor market structure also affect the indian labor market structure this is the our part now we come into the labor market structure in contemporary india is audible sir your video is not moving so, so my actually someone uh, from other side is suggest some madam mahalakshmi ma'am ah uh, mahalakshmi madam you ask him yes sir okay so uh, now we come into the global perspective uh, lay, uh, global perspective to indian perspective of the labor market indian perspective of the labor market okay <coughs> indian perspective of the labor labor market so in the indian labor market perspective in particularly in the marxian perspective so indian labor are more reserve or okay reserve army according to marx labor are reserve army so reserve army means to labor are used in more unemployed and under, underemployed in the capitalist society according to marx perspective so the reserve army of labor enable the reserve army of labor enable to employer to pay low wages and to poor working conditions so this is happened in the indian economy so indian economy majority of the laborers are unemployed and majority laborers are underemployed so laborers are paid in the low wages and laborers are working in the very poor working conditions okay so indian in the context the indian labor market is more complex indian labor market is more complex why this indian labor market is more complex because of indian labor market as a segmentation and the fragmentation of the labor market. so indian labor market is more segmentation and the fragmentation of the labor market what is fragmentation of the labor market so the fragmentation of the labor market related to the skilled and the unskilled of the labor so skilled and the unskilled of the labor so majority of the indian labor market more than 73% of the indian labor market are unskilled labor market. okay so more than 40% of the labor in india as the illiterate illiterate okay so indian labor market more fragmented this fragmented arises because of low level of skilled and unskilled labor why this low level of skill or unskilled labor because of low level of literacy and the low level of educational status okay another one is the segmentation segmentation of the indian labor market. so the segmentation of the indian labor market is the formal and the informal framework of the economy so segmentation refers to the formal sector and the informal sector so in india in india is the more <coughs> more in the informal sector more in the informal sector okay 
more in the informal sector also. So we need that uh, what is formal, what is informal. I am not going into the definitions. Okay, so it will take more time. So in simple, formal employment means they have some social securities. At least they have paid leave. Paid leave, they have guarantee in the employment. But informal labor, informal labor, uh, informal labor means they no guarantee in the employment. There is no guarantee in the social security, lack of social security. Okay, this is the broader concept of the formal and the informal work. So the nature of the Indian economy is more in the informal economy. So in the informal economy, workers also in the informal workers. Okay. According to NSSO, according to NSSO, National Sample Survey Organization, uh, in 2017 and 18, 85% of the workers in the informal sector, 85% of the worker in India belong to the informal sector. In addition to this, in addition to this, 5% of formal sector, 5% of the formal sector also working in the informal community, informal <coughs> condition. <coughs> Sorry, informal conditions, informal conditions. So, therefore, Indian economy, more than 90% of workers in India were informal workers, informal workers. So, this is the fact in the Indian labor market. So, so Indian labor market already as the informal labor market. Now, the condition is that Indian labor market, the formal labor market also informalized. The formal labor market also informalized. That is called informalization of formal informalization of formal labor market. So this informal the informalization arises. The informalization arises particularly in the structural after uh, structural adjustment program. So it means that uh, capitalism in the Indian economy, capitalism, the emergence of capitalism in the Indian economy. So this informal worker in the formal sector means in the formal sector, majority of the workers, majority of the workers hired on the contract basis rather than the regular basis. Huh? So in the formal sector, workers are hired in casual and contractors. There is no, no agreement. There is no agreement given to the laborers, laborers. So majority of the formal workers in India is the contract basis. So this process is called the informalization of the formal labor market, okay? So Indian labor market already has the informal labor market. So the informal labor is, the informal labor uh, or, uh, lived in a very extremely vulnerable conditions uh, due to this, jobless growth and job loss growth, particularly in the structural adjustment program. In addition to this, so the Indian laborers, majority laborers are informal. The informal labor are under vulnerable conditions. This vulnerable conditions has increased, particularly in the structural adjustment, after structural adjustment program. In addition to this, in addition to this, the economic shock, the sudden economic also uh, threaten to the vulnerability of the Indian laborers. So what are these uh, sudden economic shocks? One is the demonetization. So the demonetizations entirely affected the informal worker, particularly in the MSME informal workers. So this uh, during this demonetization period, the unemployment rate has increasing. So after this demonetizations, the vulnerability of the workers has increased. Okay. So this is the first economic shocks given by our government. So second economic shock, second economic shocks also threaten to the uh, vulnerability of the informal market. The second shock is the GST, goods and service tax. So this uh, goods and service tax also affected in the small and medium industries. <coughs> so this ultimately affected the informal worker, informal workers. Okay, so second. And the third one is the Lockdown, lockdown. So during this COVID, so very strict and stringent uh, type of lockdown announced by our government. So this also affected the vulnerability. This also affected, otherwise it, this also increasing the vulnerability of the uh, vulnerability of the informal workers in the Indian labor market. Okay. So our point is that. Uh, 
uh, our point is that this vulnerability of labor market arises in india in the structural after structural adjustment program followed by demonetization followed by gst and lockdown lockdown so this 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 policies this government policies affected the challenging and employment challenging for employment and challenging for the well being of the laborers laborers okay come into the in historical perspective of labor market in india so the nehruvian socialism the nehruvian socialism is the best period for uh, well being of the laborer particularly in the first four decades of independence india so uh, it, this is called the period of nehruvian socialism then in, during this nehruvian socialism the economic transformation is slow slow it means that modest but at the same time modest at the best but after this uh, during this nehru period the occupational uh, occupational transformation that means that occupational structural transformation is slowly moving slowly moving but the uh, labor market perspective the indian laborer is the decent employment decent employment so decent employment conditions and the well being of the worker is the very decent but in the after uh, uh structural adjustment program but with the after structural adjustment program our employment is the uh, our uh, transformation is very fast but in the labor perspective the vulnerability has increasing more okay this is the historical perspective of the labor market in india come into the data and methodology data and methodology if you understand the labor market of india there are two major sources one is the census of india another one is the <coughs> another one is the uh, another another one is the nss nss so the re, the in recent one is the periodic labor survey so first come into the nss sorry first come into the census of india so the census of india also provided provided data on the labor market structure of india but the problem of census and nsso they have di these two different sources have different methodology different methodology so generally the census census estimate the labor uh, labor is low level compared with the nsso the reason is that the changing of definition of worker so what is worker so the uh, the first uh, census in 1872 but the definition of work come in only in 1901 1901 so in the 1901 in the 1901 1911 and 1921 up to up to 2011 this is the last latest census so in the this census every year the changing definition of worker from one census to another census in 1901 1911 and 1921 the worker definition has is same but after that after the 1931 and 1941 the worker definition has changed 1931 and 1941 the definition of worker has changed so in 1951 also the worker definition has changed in 1971 in 1961 and 1971 also the worker definition has changed but but 1981 1991 2001 and 2011 the worker definition has as similar the worker definition has similar so the recent uh, the recent 2011 the in 2011 the 2011 definition is derived from the 1981 definitions so in the 1981 definitions in the 1981 definitions uh, workers are divided into two categories one is the main workers and the marginal workers so main workers refers to those workers who are um, uh, working more than 183 days considered as the main workers those workers less than 183 consider as the <coughs> consider as the marginal workers so these workers also classified into uh, cultivators agricultural labors this cultivators and agricultural labor consider as the agricultural workers then non workers then household industry then other workers this is the classification of the census at recent period 
So our point is that the compar comparability of census is very difficult because the changing definition of uh, uh, workers from one census to another census. So the most widely accepted me measurement of labor market structure is the NSSO. So this NSSO uh, started, this NSSO started since 1955, this uh, NSSO particularly in the employment and uh, unemployment survey started in 1955. So this 1955 survey is based on the Dental Vela Committee, Dental Vela Committee. So this committee, uh, uh, this committee suggested the unemployment and the employment measure. So this, on the basis of this committee, the conceptual framework was <coughs> followed. So uh, followed, so every five or four years, the employment and um, unemployment survey has covered. This employment and unemployment survey covered both quantitative and qualitative aspect of the Indian labor market. So this uh, employment and unemployment survey covered both uh, labor post participation, workforce participation, status of employment. This status of employment consists of employment uh, of three, one is the self-employment, another one is the regular employment, another one is the casual employment. So this employment unemployment survey also cover the level of unemployment. This level of unemployment also consists of usual status principle. So usual status principle means annual period, the, then subsidiary status, then current monthly status, then current weekly status. So this uh, <coughs> Current weekly status considered as the open unemployment. Open employment. Okay. So, uh, in general, in general, the uh, employment and uh, this employment unemployment survey covered not only the labor market structure; it also covered the level of education of the workers, workers in the organized and the unorganized sector. This employment unemployment survey also covered migration and workforce participation and union activity of the labor. So this is the uh, em employment and unemployment survey. So the recent government, recent, recent government also measured some, take some measure to improve the uh, measurement of the labor market st structure in India. They provide periodic labor survey, periodic labor survey. This periodic labor survey is the recommendation of the task force committee by the Niti Ayok. Uh, since 2017. As per today, there are three periodic labor survey came. The first periodic labor survey, July 2017 and 2018. The second periodic labor survey uh, is the uh, survey is the July 2018 and June, uh, June 2019. This uh, current is the third periodic labor survey, 2019 and two, 2020. Okay. So this periodic labor survey is better measurement of employment and unemployment survey. Okay. So this employment and unemployment survey only cover household level, but this periodic labor survey covered both household and enterprises level also. This periodic labor survey covered both rural and urban, covered male and female. It also covered this, this also covered labor post participation, work post participation, employment in the formal sector, employment in the informal sector. <coughs> and also the first time this survey, periodic labor survey, covered hours of work, hours of work. Okay, hours of work. How many hours they are working in particular type of employment? So what is the unemployment condition? Uh, and also technical education, vocational education of the employer. employer. Okay, so the periodic labor survey is more wider coverage than employment and unemployment survey. The reason is that this uh, employment and employment survey provide only four years in a gap, or sometimes it extended five years. Five years. So during this long period, the policy makers failed to frame correct policy because of lack of data. So this periodic labor survey provide in the annual basis. So it is easy for policy maker to frame the good policy. Okay. So another uh, merit of the periodic labor survey is that 
the employment and unemployment survey is failed to cover seasonal employment pattern in india so in we know that indian india is the agri agricultural economy so in agricultural type of employment is the seasonal unemployment and the discussed unemployment so this measures failed to cover employment and unemployment survey so this periodic labor survey provide seasonal pattern of unemployment the seasonal pattern of unemployment covered in a year <coughs> four quarters four quarters that means that the every three months they are calculated the days of employment this days of employment this three quarters covered both principal status subsidiary status current monthly status and current weekly status okay so another uh, advantages of the uh, another advantages of the periodic labor survey is that the previous employment and unemployment survey failed to collect employment income it means that earning of the employment the employment and unemployment survey also provide earning of the workers the earning of the workers only provided regular employment and casual employment but in the case of they failed to cover employment earning of the self employed worker self employed worker okay self employed worker so in india first time the periodic labor survey covered the self employed workers earning self employed workers earning because more than 54% of the labor market in india based on the self employed worker so this is the advantage this is the advantage so another advantage is the this periodic labor survey as very structured type it covered both uh, metropolitan city and the small towns and the villages villages okay so there are different advantages is there in the uh, periodic labor survey uh, compared with the national employment uh, unemployment survey so in uh, even though the periodic labor survey also some limitations the major limitation of the periodic labor survey uh, and also in the employment and unemployment survey failed to cover employment pattern of the women workers employment pattern of the women workers so the employment pattern of the women workers the un accounting system the un accounting system uh, stated that is a more wider coverage of the female work employment female work employment in india the female work employment uh, <coughs> particularly in the household level Uh, household level female are more engaged in household activities this household activities this household activities failed by nsso as well as the periodic labor survey so this uh, uh, in gender perspective both uh, uh, gender perspective both uh, uh, employment and unemployment survey and the periodic labor survey failed to adopt the un measurement of uh, uh, system of accounting okay in addition to this this uh, decent work concept decent work concept come to our point our methodology itself our methodology itself it means that uh, the recent periodic labor survey and the previous uh, uh, employment and unemployment survey failed to cover decent work, work perspective data decent per, uh, perspective data particularly in the decent work perspective what is the mode of payment on wage <coughs> the wage payment is whether in cash or kind and in uh, also related to the it also related to the trade union activities of the laborers trade union activities of the laborers and total amount of the wage total amount of the wage so <coughs> this is the biggest drawback of the our employment and unemployment survey so our employment and unemployment survey also failed to cover decent work concept particularly in the vulnerable concept particularly in the consumption pattern of the consum uh, consumption pattern of the household workers consumption pattern of the uh, uh, consumption pattern of the household worker it means that labels okay so this is our condition this is our conditions okay uh just let 
now uh, <coughs> come into the table labor post participation labor post participation labor post participation <coughs> so in my uh, in my powerpoint i provide labor post participation both employment and unemployment uh, survey nsso and the periodic labor survey of the three so in the periodic labor survey 2000 uh, due to time constraints i uh, i deal only with the uh, periodic labor survey i completely uh, skip about the uh, nss okay so in the periodic labor survey in 2016 and 17 so the labor participation is low compared with the recent periodic labor survey uh, recent periodic labor survey so the uh, recent period the periodic labor uh, sorry in recent period labor participation and work participation has increasing labor participation and work participation work participation has increasing particularly in the female perspective female perspective so <coughs> our point is that our point uh, um, our point is that during this uh, period uh, during this period particularly in the 2017 and 18 the labor participation rate it means that uh, uh, in the pre lockdown it means that the current weekly status current weekly status means the enumerator asked the respondent what is the last week of employment status that is called open unemployment status so this uh, open unemployment status that is called current weekly status increased increase 8 percent to 18.5 percent similarly this increase in both increased in urban unemployment this un urban unemployment increased 11 percent to 33 percent okay so uh, the uh, rural unemployment also increasing rural unemployment also increasing so our con our uh, major finding is that the labor force labor force during this labor force in the unemployment period in the uh, particularly in the lockdown period uh, <coughs> 42.5 percent of labor force did not get any job did not get, get any job they earn less than 200 per day during the lockdown period lockdown period so after the lockdown period in the first after the lockdown period 32 percent of labor force 32 percent of the labor force earning at least 20, at least rupees 200 per day 200 per day okay um, uh, twenty six point five percent of the labor force to yen less than hundred rupees, less than hundred rupees. So this is the condition. This is the conditions. Uh, so the self employment and the regular employment and the casual employment perspective. The self employment also increasing, casual employment also increasing. The regular employment as declining in the uh, last three years. Last three years. Okay. Come. Uh, come into the come into the uh, yeah, what this uh, last uh, five years particularly in 2015 to 2020 that 2015 to 2020 uh, our growth rate has come down <coughs> as a result and as a result the growth rate failed to create employment employment so our conclusion is that the indian labor market Indian labor market as a structural inequalities and the vulnerability of work, the vulnerability of work, particularly in the decent work concept, uh, decent, decent work concept of sustainable development is the more vulnerable, not only in India, in the entire world. So therefore, we think that the overall strategy of neoliberalism of structural transformation and the Indian economy as under severe crisis, particularly in the labor perspective. So due to time constraint, I skip to many, what <coughs> uh, this, uh, 
tables okay so our point is that um, the vulnerability as increasing not only india the vulnerability as increasing the entire world so this also affected in the indian labor market indian labor market so the vulnerability and the decent work is the major challenges in india this is not only in india it's the entire world. so this is my conclusions Uh, participants, if you have any questions, you can ask uh, Professor Shivashankar. And uh, I think. Uh, uh, good morning, Shivashankar sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I think uh, Professor Arna Chalam. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just I am not asking questions. Just I mean, just I want to get your opinion. Uh, uh, who is responsible for all these uh, 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 labor market vulnerabilities? The the neoliberalism policy, neoliberalism policy as the responsible. So we want to think about the uh, structural adjustment and the neoliberal policy. So the neoliberal policy, not only India, the entire globe that is called financial capitalism. So the financial capitalism is the responsible to increasing the vulnerability of the labor market, not only in India, it's an entire world. But uh, such vulnerabilities are not there in European countries, no? In no, America? Uh, in European countries, it is comparably less, uh, uh, comparably uh, less. But the, this uh, capitalism that is called casino capitalism in European countries, it means that not capital move from the south. So oh. in the south, they involving in the production. Uh, madam, uh, so why they are capital move from north to the south? Because oh, madam, name, name, laborers, name, 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 laborers wage and social security measures, they have more. So the cost of production has more in the north. And as a result, they shifted production activity in the south. In the production, uh, uh, production activity in the south, the south is the reserve army because of too much of laborers. They are ready to work at the lower wage. This is the advantages for the capitalist. At the same time, they threat to the north industry, north workforce also, because of we are shifting capital north to the south. So there is no need for the uh, labor from the north. This is the conditions. So both north as well as the south as the disadvantages for the labor person. Good morning, Nama. Madam. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hello, Tina. Ah, hello, boy. Ambar Yes, Shiva Shankar. One question. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yes. Okay. And uh, you are talking about even the uh, definition of uh, worker has not been finalized. Okay, it is yes, changing. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, what about the, even the skilled and unskilled? We are not able to distinguish between the skilled labor and unskilled labor. Actually, uh, actually uh, this is also uh, not finalized with skills and un unskilled labor. Generally, the skill labor is related to the education. So in the education related to the, uh, particularly in the vocational education and the training. If we if provided more vocational training, sorry, vocational education and the training, they consider as the skill labor. Those who are not received vocational education and uh, training, they are not uh, considered, they consider, they, they consider as the unskilled labor. So skilled and, labor and, uh, means those who are receiving vocational education and uh, technical education and the training. These are the three components. What about uh, this uh, skill, uh, skillness earned through experience? Uh, th this is the controversy actually this is the controversy yeah this and also the... and also one more uh, uh, this thing i am not uh, uh, accepting your uh, statement of this uh, technological revolution artificial fourth generation yeah, industry yes. uh, uh, has uh, reduced uh, the labor force no uh, because it has uh, definitely increased uh, to some extent 
especially at the upper level uh, the it people and all uh, they they are able to um, and also in, to some extent uh, the riskiness of the industries it has been also reduced so we must have some uh, anthetic uh, research on this topic uh, yeah uh, there, actually there ma'am uh, ma the fourth uh, fourth uh, industrial revolution is based on the artificial intelligence and robotic so robotics. this artificial intelligence and the robotic type of productions engaged in the north particularly okay. in the european countries and this uh, robotic uh, type of manufacturing activities change the entire uh, workforce structure this study made by the ilo also the uh, this ilo stated ilo study according to carbino carbino in 2020 recent study uh, argued that 47% of the us unemployment is at high risk of okay. this robotic robotic uh, robotic in the last 2005 uh, 2005 to 2014 the uh, due to this fourth type of uh, in industry no, no, revolution you are quoting with america i am asking to about india of increasing unemployment india india what ma'am I, you are quoting with uh, America, no? That yes, uh, yes. I am saying because still we don't have such type of no, uh, revolution. This fourth, no, this fourth type of industrial revolution uh, now occurred in the Europe. It's slowly moving to the south. South. So yeah, in future, right. this also affects the entire yes, global uh, labor. Yes, happened to be. Okay, congratulations, Sir Shankar. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Sir Shankar, I have one more doubt. Uh, what about the, I mean recently 2020 government of india brought uh, four labor courts uh -huh. will will the labor courts will solve the vulnerability of i mean uh, labor la workers in india or no no the, uh, during this covid period is the labor law labor law as uh, abolished by you our union government this also increasing the vulnerability because no no uh, now now government of india has brought another four four, four uh, labor code Labor yes, code, yes. Uh, actually this labor code is more fair to the entrepreneurs entrepreneurs mm -hmm. particularly in the manufacturing sectors so our manufacturing sectors already failed to create employment so this again the manufacturing sector adopted more contract labor rather than the regular labor. so this also uh, threatening to the vulnerability of the our labor the new code is more favor to the contract labor rather than the regular employment when the contract labor there there is no social security it automatically it increase the vulnerability so this is the entire uh, different issue labor market flexibility and the uh, inflexibility issue so uh, it will take more time to discuss what is the advantages of flexibility uh, uh, so just i mean i am asking a common question i mean there are political parties i mean they are always i mean uh, with the workers or laborers or labor movement uh, something like that i mean uh, what they are doing suppose when you say that i mean the workers are facing all the uh, i mean the problems at present uh, they had uh, all the, they have all the vulnerabilities what is the role of these political parties who once i mean uh, very much supported the labor uh, i mean organizations or labor movements or they themselves i mean considered as a labor party something like that just i want to that if you uh, look at the indian uh, historical perspective the nehruvian socialism period is the best for the labor perspective uh, labor is well being because in the nehruvian period slow economic transformation around the so called into growth rate of 3.5% but slow at the best after that the structural adjustment program our growth rate has increasing but the employment condition is the worst uh, in the neo liberal uh, reform period the uh, trade union activities completely banned so there is no labor rights so even uh, you, we are in formal employment so we are also uh uncertainty because of there is no uh, legal right or the absence of worker rights in the formal sector also this happened in last uh, three decades particularly no i could understand i mean uh, what you said eh? what about the parties parties who supported the labor movements eh? what happened to them in india there is no party support the labor movement <laughs> that is the fact Only vote banking, Arnav. Vote banking. 
<laughs> you may be you may be experiencing you know that yes we may be experiencing uh, uh, professor sorry to interrupt uh, we have like another session coming up we need to start the session so uh, Uh, allow me to wind up this session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. And uh, let's move on to the next uh, uh, session, which will be handled by uh, Professor Chinnamay Madam, head of the Department of Economics, University of Madras. And uh, we all know that, like, uh, how good she is in her academic and uh, uh, research activities. Uh, she has about like 150 uh, publications in Indian and international journals, and has participated and presented in. Uh, more than like 180 national international seminars and uh, uh, conferences uh, her area of social specialization or developmental economics environmental economics and uh, uh, women studies uh, of course she has completed a ugc sponsor uh, type a uh, project titled the determining factors of uh, solar energy utilization in uh, the rural household and uh, uh, on behalf of the department of economics government arts college nandanam i welcome chitam bai madam and to all the participants i need to uh, tell this particular fact some three days back only she had a, a major uh, surgery just because uh, she accepted uh, my invitation that she made a point to come over and uh, deliver the lecture and uh, that is why i, uh, I interpreted uh, the previous session like she is not uh, uh, feeling good uh, that like she had a surgery No, I'm sorry to share this to your audience, but I need to tell. And uh, and uh, from the bottom of my heart, like I thank you for uh, uh, coming up here and uh, honoring your uh, words. Welcome, madam. Thank you so much, madam. My voice is audible for you. My voice is audible for you. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, okay, right. But then the attendance only is not enough. Yes, sir. 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 ओके Good morning to everybody. Respected the principal of the Mandalam College and the department of head, Dr. Rajendra, and the seminar convener, Dr. Pararun, and my respected Lama, Dr. Kalasi Gunda Madam. My dear and the most friendly, Mr. Arunachal Sir, each and every person who has been so near to me, thank you so much for giving me such an opportunity. But for the sake of the word, living word only. I am presenting in the only. Otherwise, I have the text of the right. Okay. So today I will come to the point in the part of my presentation. We are all very well known. My topic is the regulation of that agricultural sector after pandemic. This is my topic, and for today I'm going to be talking about the industry. We are all knowing about that when the pandemic occurs, and when we have, what are the consequences we have during the pandemic of two years? Why I am talking this particular issue means it is very very important for us, and also. It is the creature. Okay, we can get the option. We need food, mainly directly or indirectly. On the option, we need 
agriculture support. But what happened? Because of the lockdown due to the corona COVID-19 pandemic, in every country, mainly the part of community affected largely. Why I am saying this? They are nearing to the harvest stage. That time, the corona virus affected. So, only the access of the workers and the labor, logistics of the farmers saved huge, huge loss as well as the trouble harvesting crops failed to reach the market. That is transportation problem they have in the period of COVID. Not only in India, but globally, they are over 570 million farmers farm land are currently under cultivation that period and particularly managed it by the family people in India. Because we know that the other people, they migrate and they won't place to the other places to do the casual non form work. For that reason, it was managed by the family people accounting for more than 75%. One percentage that 33% of the world was domestic product is from the agricultural practices. This is a very, very important one. Apart from that, the pandemic leads to the global loss of between 2.4 to 9.0 trillion dollars in GDP. 2020. Apart from that, the food and agricultural organization, it is also estimated that 60% of the world population depends on agriculture for their, for their primary source of income. It's all as an economist, we know that. Yes, I am remarking this one. All the top two years went on, no. That, that's why now we are in the comfort zone. We can forget that one. What all the things happened in two years back, that may be forgotten. The same way, the world population depends on agriculture for the primary purpose of income, harvesting, processing food are the two important issues facing domestic challenges. Secondary to the global COVID-19. The process of harvesting crops and successfully packing them for the shipment and the processing is under extensive, extensive stress domestically. Why agriculture is very important nowadays? 820 million people face chronic hunger during that period. 113 million is accused of severe insecurity feelings. We are all sensitive insecurity feelings during the period, even each and every one of us felt that insecurity, whether the food is available for us, whether the news will come to our door, or we have to search, or what type of the vegetables is available, all these thoughts were linked in our mind. So, the disturbance of the food access only 
So the pandemic effects don't grow immediately and severely. Another one, the try longer term, say, in the steps that the international labor organization provides the income to over 1 billion people worldwide and it remains the backbone of the many low-income countries. The WHO also provided so many support to the entire world, contributing to the third part of the GDP globally and account for 60.4% of the employment in those countries. So, so many studies are the evidence how the work over are shifted and whatever the percentage I couldn't prefer flight, I couldn't sit for a long time. That's why I did not possible for me to prepare PowerPoint presentation. Finally, for the need. So, in every nation, the agricultural sector gains a model to place as against the place the agents of the economic development that we know. Due to the high dependency of the natural forces resources to get low value products apart from that, it will create the economic inconsistency and the low price. Income elasticity is also a great demand. For strengthening the agricultural product to help resident people, the Globe Bank Group, that is the US based one, it starts a food system maintenance. It was created. India is the second largest agricultural land in the world. That we know. This comprises 159.7 million hectares agricultural land. At present scenario, the nation which is a world needs variable and productive embarking. And also innovative approaches for created and it is boosting our agricultural needs and to enhance the bridging between the health shock and the economic shock. The world must adapt new methods. This way, it was beaten the issue created by the pandemic to the agriculture and the food sector. The prioritization also given and adapted to innovative in all aspects. And it creates a foremost drive to the productivity growth also. In that way, it will lead to the sustainability. The available natural resources are adequate. Appropriate and available resources should flow within the right direction. The situation within the global cannot be overcome. This is the involvement of single departments or uh, multidisciplinary teams for the public health, speciality, social leadership, everybody. We know, we know that the farmers are back home of each and every country. So, prevention is often better than so. Therefore, the government and the agricultural research institute should train the farmers about innovative farming methods and attending to the precaution they required even after COVID-19. So this is the thing. Apart from that, 
the agricultural crop variety in our india we will have three main groups what is that one india is based on the seasonal crop seasonal crop means farish crop rabbit crop and diet crop so i want to give more explanation for this but anyway i want to tell you share for the issue the farish crop this crop are harvested in the month of september and october okay the rabi crop is going to harvest on the in the winter season that is october to november and the diet crop
mainly due to the failure of the supply chain and the loss of marketability of the harvesting crop. Agriculture is the only sector in the world to help to grow the economy of the most vulnerable people. Any sector falls mean falls down in the country mean any economy falls mean we can bring them up. But if the agriculture has created any issue means it will create heavy loss to the particular country during the COVID-19 crisis. The agricultural products are greater necessity and each and every one we know the importance of the agricultural crops and the importance of transportation. Apart from that, we have to maintain the supply chain as well as the demand side also. So one problem that is the world food security gave a slogan, it is motivated and the practice of the agriculture in the young generation, they say that, let's make farming famous. So it is a world famous slogan in the agricultural sector after COVID. So I already told you that market failure due to the transportation, the everything we had we did this for a virus. So each and every price was built up. But I honestly say that so many studies on the presentation I made after Corona. One of my findings is the agricultural sector won't affect that much of COVID because before that, the contribution of the GDP to the agricultural sector was very low. But the service sector took place and lead the economy. As an economist, we know that after Corona, after pandemic, each and every person knew the importance of the agricultural product and self-dependency. Another one I wanted to share with you. Each and every person, you know that when we had eight months leave, when we sat in our house, we created chicken garden. And also, started garden also. In summer, we can say that Matai Mari Sota. So, each person was very much interested to have their own crop or spinach or some organic vegetables in their food. So this is very, very important. That much of the awareness was created due to the pandemic. That's why I told you that during this post corona, the agriculture was not affected that much. When you take the industry and the service sector, drastically it affected. Drastically. Only I can say that it is not possible for us to export more because the time flights are cancelled. You know very well. Movement is restricted. Our crop movement and not only that, the thing is the perishable item was affected much. That I agree. But the other items are we had self-sufficiently in our own place. The farmers were very much happy. They sell all their products in the doctor, even we people purchase this fruit 
vegetables, fish, dairy products, even our doorsteps also. In some area only, meager area only, it was not available. Apart from that, I don't want to come to the migration of the worker. If I go for the migration of the agriculture, labor needs, it will take a huge topic to discuss. But the, just the importance of the agriculture and how we overcome this pandemic, that I wanted to share with you. That's why I wanted to appear in front of you. So many literature was available about the pandemic and how agriculture was affected, perishable items was affected, money is closed, and vehicles is not permitted to move one place to another place. All these literature words, we are having so many things. I don't want to comment to this. My point of view is how we have overcome all these defects because our India is very clever. In 2015 onwards, our Prime Minister Modi introduced artificial intelligence in the agricultural sector. And also, I presented one paper for the office artificial intelligence in the agricultural sector. That is the entirely different. How the our electronic gadgets and how our internet are taking place, very important place in the agricultural sector, that discussion is, it will take much time to discuss that one, but I wanted to give a brief thing how we overcome this pandemic. Because of my health, I couldn't explain more on that. For that reason, I, I wanted to share artificial intelligence and the internet thing, thinking, the thing, it's wireless communication. Image processing, cloud computing will be a game changer for our agriculture sector. No one denies this one. We people also, that is, I am the director of the Agroeconomic Research Center. They, we are conducting so many services, particularly. One of the surveys is Soil Health Corps, Clean. It was introduced by our Prime Minister, our Modi Ji, 2015 onwards. So, this type of the new scheme and new artificial intelligence created game changer to the agricultural sector. So, if our country to overcome with this pandemic means it was happened purely with the help of technology. No one denies that one. So this is very, very important. This happened only with the young people. That people come out and started implementing their ideas, innovative ideas to the agricultural field. Young people, because that time, I already told you, it made for impossible for transportation, logistics, and supply chain. No, that time, our young people created so many innovative ideas to keep our agriculture on the pandemic situation. That's why agriculture sector 
we write from the pandemic situation, whatever may be. One thing we always overestimate the changes that may occur within two years and underestimate the changes that may occur within the next 10 days. So, these changes have, we have predicted and might not happen suddenly. There will be a vast possibility over the following several decades. We know that drone, artificial intelligence civilization, in the way in which we could never have imagined, particularly in the field of agriculture. The IT professionals, they helped very much to this particular sector. If I am permitted or my health permit, I will show you the most of the one of the artificial intelligence that is for available in other countries that I will show you. So there is an enormous opportunity waiting for our people to convert the technology and the agriculture. Technology, just like internet thinking, artificial intelligence, data science, satellite communication, mobile, mobility, have the potential to extend the agricultural productivity. Exponentially, remarkably, large scale of technology during this sector created and the talented persons are emerging in this sector for that reason we overcome from the pandemic, particularly in the agricultural sector. So what is the thing I wanted to stress means whatever the thing that is the internet thinking artificial intelligence, data analysis, remote sensing, whatever available, our people are not ready to accept that. When I went to the survey, to the Salem, Ramanar, my mother says I thank you. Seriously, so many people even they don't know the soil health part or whatever the things are available. But what the things are going on, the agricultural department is there. People are also supporting the farmers, but the farmers are not ready to take in one side. The another side is the department. They do. They are feeding the farm. The department wants the farmers to keep in the dark themselves. They are not giving, or uh, they are not providing even the soil feed to the farmers. When they went there, readily to the field, when they went to the field, that's why only they gave a soil cut. So that's why I am our team, myself, and Mr. Matthew, Mr. Tony, Mr. Moeda, Mr. Lugan, came to understand that it was the farmers are keeping in the dark and fight. For that, they are unaware about the all the things. Even though during the pandemic period, so many loans, so many schemes, so many facilities are given to the farmers 
and common community. But some people utilize it properly. But most of our Indian agricultural farmers are not utilizing it. That much. So this is the real situation that I wanted to share with you. Even though whatever may be, whatever the electronic item, whatever the artificial intelligence we introduce in agriculture, we, we people are restricting ourselves and the make use of availability is restricted. So we are really 450 agro agri startup in India in keeping with the estimate of Federation of Indian Chamber of Farmers and Industry, they started they start up our growing at 25 percent last week yearly. So these are all the Reviews what I had after the pandemic, how our media stands in the agricultural sector. Thank you so much for giving me such an opportunity. Thank you. Uh, because of quality, Brinda, Madam, morning also, she blessed me. Thank you. Look your health, concentrate on your health. Then we come to the lecture. Madam told me, but in summary, I think most of the participants understood summary. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Madam. Please go on the same tone, Madam, Madam, Madam. Madam. For a Kalangan Indian, where is the now? Now, this is the Nothing is important for me. I want to be more important to my country and to my economic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, professor, not only uh, professor, not only you kept your word, you did a uh, great delivery of your uh, lecture. Like we all uh, benefited uh, uh, by listening to your uh, speech. Uh, thanks for the uh, spirit that you have showed. Uh, definitely, the audience who are, uh, have joined us like you have been definitely motivated uh, by uh, the way you handled the research in spite of the difficulty you are going through. Uh, we, the Department of Economics from Government Arts College, will always be indebted to you uh, for the support uh, you have shown to us. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Please, please do take care of it. Thank you, Nada. Thank you. Congratulations, Chennamai. Uh, uh, take your health. Huh? Thank you, Nada. Unexpected, I did it. Cannot be health issue. My other part. Okay. Well, all, all the participants will wish you uh, good health, but speedy recovery. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nada, now yes. any mouth means kindly post to my mail ID. Okay. Uh, madam, I mean, uh, just take care of your health. Yeah, yeah, that's more important. Thank you. Take, take rest, Chinnamai. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Thank you, Thank you. I believe from this. Yeah, okay. okay, you take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, dear participants, we will have a break for five minutes. Uh, 12 o'clock, 12 uh, noon, we will uh, join again for the technical session two. So all the participants, all the paper presents, be ready with your uh, PPTs and papers. By 12, we will join. Okay. Uh, the Zoom link will be live. Okay. So we won't discontinue the Zoom link. You can be on the line. Be ready for your uh, presentation part. Okay. We will we'll have a quick break. Okay. By 12 noon.